What's up? Man, today was an unexpectedly crazy day in uh, the land of NFL free agency. Um, first, the Rams, you know, a few days ago uh, did that crazy move and uh, did a bunch of, gave up a whole bunch of, uh, at the farm to get the number one pick in the draft. Well, the Eagles, apparently just as desperate for a quarterback because they gave up uh, a bunch of their future to get the number two pick from the Cleveland Browns. So they, in desperation to find their future quarterback, gave up their first round eighth pick, their third round pick, their fourth round pick, their first round pick from 2017, and their second round pick from 2018 in order to get from the Browns their number two pick for this year and their fourth round pick for next year. I believe that's how it worked out. So uh, that's a lot. That is a lot of uh, draft picks to give up, not just this year, but also the next uh, two seasons. They're betting a lot that they are going to be getting something out of these two quarterbacks. Really, the Rams and the Eagles seriously desperate for uh, a quarterback. And it's interesting what's in common with these two teams. What quarterback that was a first round number one draft pick happens to have touched both these teams? Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford, the Rams did this several seasons ago, the last of the uh, old contract uh, collective bargaining agreement, went number one, bet the ranch, bet number one, and picked up Bradford. And uh, we know how that all worked out for the Rams. They traded him to the Eagles, which I never understood the Eagles doing that. And then the Eagles, after taking him, go and do this and bet everything in the future to get the number two pick. So it's pretty clear that Goth or Wentz, one of those two guys is going to one of these two teams. And uh, you better pray if you're one of those team's fans that those guys are the saviors to your teams because uh, you guys are in, in betting big time uh, on these guys as, um, as being the, the savior to the franchise. Savior to the franchise. I'm back home, so I had to cut my blog off a little bit short there. Um, but the, uh, yeah, so, you know, it just, it just reinforces to me the importance and how fortunate Seahawk fans we should feel that we have our franchise quarterback of the future, the next 10 years, however long Russell's going to be with us. Because just watch what's happening with these other teams, with teams like Cleveland, who have swung on and missed on quarterbacks with Menzel, and, and now these, and obviously they didn't see the, they didn't see holding on to the second round pick or the number two pick to, uh, to gra grab one of those guys, but they still need a quarterback desperately. Eagles are desperate to get a quarterback. Rams are desperate to get a quarterback. There's tons of teams out there. Look what look what the Texans did, paying a buttload of money to um, uh, what's his name from uh, from the Broncos, Osweiler, paid him tons. And he only started, what, seven games last year? I mean, talk about a guy who went from backup to, you know, starting a few games to hitting the hitting the jackpot. I mean, and, and the Texans had to do it. I mean, they, they, they lost bad in the, in the playoffs because they had a horrible QB in Brian Hoyer. So anyway... We are very lucky to have uh, Russell Wilson as our guy because, man, if you are a team without a quarterback, you're just in bad shape. And there's nothing worse than having, than not having your quarterback, of your franchise quarterback, than swinging for the fences and betting the ranch and getting a guy who doesn't work out to be your quarterback. Like what happened to the Redskins when they uh, picked up RG3, you know, Browns and Manziel. Um, just because they're high... Draft rated QBs doesn't mean it's going to translate into that. It's not a guarantee. Not everybody's uh, Andrew Luck. And even, even Andrew Luck has a bad season. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Very fascinating to see how this plays out. But this does have a direct effect on uh, the Seahawks in the sense that this is the Rams we're talking about. We play them. They're division rivals. They're probably, if you really look at it, um, in the NFC West, while the Cardinals are still up there, is probably the number one threat to us uh, winning the division. Uh, the Cardinals, 
you know, Carson Palmer's 37 and um, Fitzgerald, there's no spring chicken either. And he even said that, you know, if the day comes when Carson Palmer retires, he will probably do the same because he's not, he doesn't want to go through that crazy hell of having a bunch of horrible quarterbacks uh, running the show. So uh, the window for the Cardinals is closing. And again, because pretty soon, and Carson, Carson Palmer's great. You know, he's a very good quarterback. But uh, he couldn't finish the year last year. And he had, you know, partially because of that, I think that thumb injury that he suffered late in the season had an effect on that. But, you know, he's he's been a QB who's had issues with uh, staying healthy. And he's not getting any younger. So the Rams are the up-and-coming new threat to the Seahawks. And how this trade works with them getting this number one quarterback is huge, um, obviously. However, that affects their franchise. If it if it works out great for them, well, that's gonna be make it that's gonna make things that much more tougher for us. But how happy I would be to see the number one pick or the number, you know, the number one pick uh, go down in the annals of NFL history is another bust. But we'll see. We'll see who they who that's gonna be and how that plays out. <clears throat> but on another note, oh, oh, on the other side too, Philadelphia Eagles uh, getting the number two. Uh, their, their, I think their GM was quoted saying that, 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 uh, Bradford's still their number one quarterback and that they're going to, you know, he's still their starter, you know, and they will just work in the number two, let him sit for a while. Come on. You're going to pick the number two in the pick in the draft and you're going to bench him. You're going to sit him. Uh, if you're, if you're, if you're throwing that much into it, you're playing them this year. I'm sorry. I don't I don't see that playing out. I mean, it's a bunch of load of BS. But well, it'll be interesting to see where Bradford ends up in all this. But we do play the, the Eagles as well. So we may very well be facing the Eagles team with their number two uh, quarterback draft pick when they come up to CenturyLink later in November. That'll be very fun to see how that all plays out. So the other big free agency splash news, unexpected news today was... The Carolina Panthers uh, removing the franchise tag on cornerback Josh Norman, basically ma making him an unrestricted free agent. Uh, apparently what it is is that they had determined they were not going to be able to reach a long-term agreement with him. So they decided to not franchise tag him and let him go. So Josh Norman, one of the corner pieces uh, or the you know, key pieces of that secondary back there and that defense that they have, uh, will not be a, a Carolina Panther. Uh, I'm sure he'll be swooped up and picked up very quickly. Some possibly it's going to be a, a team with a lot of money to spend. Possibly the Rams. They need some help in the secondary. Same with the 49ers. Bears um, are all possible places they might end up. I know I saw some Seahawks fans excited at the news. Hey, we should pick him up. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I don't think we need him. We don't need... we, we I, I don't think he'd be a good fit on this team, and I think we got. I think we've got what we need to uh, make it work with uh, with the the secondary, the legion that we've got now. So that uh, was pretty unexpected move today by the Panthers, but uh, didn't make me any sadder. I don't mind if uh, I start seeing little pieces of the Panther puzzle start dropping off. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, that's it. Just want to fill you in on that. In the meantime, uh, got the draft next week. Um, the draft party at CenturyLink Field. I will be, uh, for you, those of you on Facebook, I'm going to be Facebook streaming it live. That'll be a lot of fun to track the draft and see if the Seahawks actually do actually do draft somebody in the first round and uh, what they do with it. So uh, keep in touch. More to come this season. Don't forget to subscribe to Norb Cam on YouTube. And... Uh, if you're in Seattle, enjoy this beautiful weather because it's not going to last long. All right. Talk to you soon. Go Hawks.